Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. This is my review of the Mackie EM99B, which is another affordable broadcast dynamic microphone. The mic kit will cost you around $150. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below, where you'll also find all of the recording settings, which are also listed in the doobly-doo or the lower third. Let's talk about what comes in the box. No big surprise, you are going to get the microphone, you get a foam windscreen, a 10-foot XLR to XLR cable, a desktop stand, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, this thing feels absolutely fantastic. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grille with no give to it. It has a metal mounting bracket and a metal tension screw. The mount has 5 8 inch threading. The rear of the microphone has the XLR port. And if you care, this microphone is made in China. If you care about the specs, I have listed all of them in the description, and I will have them up on the screen along with the graphs in case you want to pause them and take a closer look. Now I am spinning around the EM99B to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now I want to see how effective the microphone and the provided windscreen are at rejecting plosives. So please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. And I want to point out for that test that the windscreen is not fully on the microphone. It is just barely on and there is maybe two inches of air from the inside of the windscreen to the front of the microphone. That's why it was so effective. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the EM99B, and now I am four feet away from the Mackie EM99B. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, I am now typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now, here is how the microphone sounds three inches away from my mouth in a fairly well-treated room. And now, here is how the microphone sounds about three inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Now I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see if it can reject that. And then I will tap on the boom arm. I am also incredibly annoying, so I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to see if the provided foam windscreen has a big impact on the tone of the recording. So right now I'm three inches off without the foam windscreen installed and here is how it's sounding. And here is how the microphone sounds with the provided windscreen installed. And again, here is how the microphone sounds without the provided foam windscreen installed. And for good measure, here is another sample of the microphone with the provided foam windscreen. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a handful of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear it within a bit of context so you don't just hear it within a vacuum. Starting on the Mackie EM99B, three inches off, gain set at around four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Starting on the SE Electronics SEV7, this is a $100 handheld dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock, check the lower third, let's go back to the Mackie and do a bunch more comparisons. Back again on the Mackie EM99B for a palate cleanser, let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the Shure SM58, another $100 handheld dynamic microphone. This needs no introduction. Here is how it sounds. Three inches off, four o'clock on the gain. Let's go back to the Mackie.
Here we are again to clear out your ear holes on the Mackie EM99B. How do you like it? Let's go to another mic. Now I am on the Elgato Wave DX, which is a $100 broadcast dynamic microphone. Three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. This is a bright one, but let's go back to the Mackie and do a bunch more comparisons. Back again on the Mackie EM99B, make sure to check the lower third and here's how it sounds. Let's go to another comparison. Now I am on the Rode PodMic, which is another $100 broadcast dynamic microphone. Three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. Check the lower third. Let's go back to the 99B because we got a bunch more to go. This is the Midway Point Palette Cleanser on the Mackie EM99B. No big surprise. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2040, another $100 XLR broadcast dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. Are you surprised? Here is how it sounds. Let's do more comparisons. We're not done. We're not done yet. Back on the Mackie, I think this price point for broadcast dynamics is getting a bit crowded, but here's your palate cleanser. Let's do some more. Now I am on the SE Electronics DCM6, which is a $150 XLR broadcast dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, dynamite is not engaged, and here is how this compares to the Mackie. Which do you prefer? Let's go back and do a handful more. Back on the Mackie for another palate cleanser. Let me know what you think in the comments down below of my comment. Is this market getting a bit crowded? Let's go to another mic. Now I am on the Shure MV7X, which is a $180 XLR broadcast dynamic microphone. Three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. What a big surprise. Check the lower third to see if I boost any of these differently in post. Let's go back to the Mackie and do two more comparisons. Can you guess what they're going to be? Howdy, howdy, howdy. I am back on the Mackie EM99B again to clear out your ear holes. Let's go do more. And now I am on the Electro Voice RE320, which is another XLR broadcast dynamic microphone. This costs $300. Three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. Let's go back to the Mackie. Hey, we are back on the Mackie again. Are you surprised you shouldn't be? This is your palate cleanser. Let's go to the penultimate microphone, I think. Now I am on the Shure SM7B, which is a $400 XLR dynamic microphone. Three inches off the end of it, gain set at 100%, neutral mode on the EQ setting. And here is how this compares to a microphone that is $250 less expensive. Let's go back to the Mackie. We got one more to go. And we have one final microphone to go, so this is your final palate cleanser on the Mackie EM99B. What do you think? Let's go to the last microphone. And finally, we are on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann U87AI. This is a $3,700 multi-pattern studio condenser microphone. Three inches off, gain set at 11 o'clock. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. Check the lower third because that's going to be super useful on this one. This is a control from video to video. Let me know which of these microphones was your favorite. Did you like the Mackie? Did you like any of the others? That's it. Let's go to the music test. Would I mind if you two were to die? Well, I don't know what I would do with my life. Honestly, I don't know what I do. What do people do with their free time? Nights? Weekends? I have no idea. What do I say about this thing? The sound is not my personal favorite. But I think there are people out there who are absolutely going to love this one. 
And first up, as far as pros, the build quality of this microphone feels fantastic. I also like that they include everything that you need to start recording, excluding the interface. You have the windscreen, the desktop stand, the XLR cable, and the body of the microphone is not very resonant at all. And then as far as cons, I find the presence and treble boost to be a bit overpowering and it comes across a touch harsh. And this is quite a chunky microphone. If you don't care about that, it's not a con, but if you're looking for something a little bit more discreet, that is going to be something that you notice. Big chungus of a mic. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the EM99B? As far as the overall sound, it is a top-heavy sounding microphone. You don't have a super robust low end in the bass and low mids. The general mids come across a bit less forward than the competition, and in my opinion, that is because the mids are a bit overpowered. What they are overpowered by is the most obvious thing about this microphone, the big boost in the presence and treble region. On the electric guitar, I wasn't a fan of it. I think it comes across a bit too top-heavy and lopsided. On the acoustic guitar, I have heard worse-sounding dynamic microphones, but it's not something that I'm going to be reaching for. I prefer a much more balanced sound with a bit more air to it. For singing vocals, there is a lot of presence, and I think that presence boost comes across a bit grating, but it is tolerable. And for spoken word, it doesn't have the thickest, most robust low end. The mids aren't overly forward, they are a bit overpowered, and you get this hyper clear presence and treble region on this thing. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Mackie EM99 b for some people? The build quality of the microphone, the accessories, and the full kit that comes with this thing for the price are absolutely great. But as far as the sound, it's not something that I personally love. And I think a lot of the broadcast dynamic microphones around this price point, they have a cool look, but the sound of them still hasn't beaten the handheld dynamics around the same price point. But that is 100% my opinion, and I understand that there are people out there who absolutely adore that super bright presence in treble region, and that's why I included a comparison to the Electro Voice RE320, because this thing's even brighter than the Mackie, and people love this thing. So if you are looking for that really bright sound, you don't want that overly robust bass and low midsection, then I say go for it because the accessories are great, the build quality is great, and I don't have any deal breakers for this thing. All right, that's all that I've got for you today. Seriously, if you got any value out of this video, if you found it fun, interesting, or helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help this channel. But if you found it stupid and you hate my face, give it a thumbs down. These people over here are amazing. They support the channel at $5 or more. I couldn't make these videos without them, so thank you to them. Say thank you to them in the comments, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.